Hello everyone, welcome back to Julie's Roots and Shoots. I'm Julie and today we are in my greenhouse and we are going to be potting up this tray of flowers that we sowed probably three, three or four weeks ago. So here, um, like these little tiny lavenders, I'm gonna go ahead and leave those in here so they can just get a little bit more established. If you can see, they've, they're just barely starting to get little itty bitty true leaves coming in. I don't know if you can see that, but, um, but for plants like in carnations and straw flowers, these all have, you can see, two, at least one or two sets of true leaves. So I guess I should back up just a second here. When I talk about true leaves, I mean the first set of leaves after the cotyledons sprout from the seed. So let's take a little bit closer look on what I'm talking about. Here we are looking at some celosia. What we see, all this green right here, these are cotyledons. And what a cotyledon is, are the first two leaves that pop the seed shell open. Coming over to one of my pepper plants, if you look at this little guy right here, you will see this is the seed up on top. And these leaves right here are the cotyledons. And the cotyledons are not the first set of true leaves. The first set of true leaves are the first leaves that come after the cotyledons. So these ones. These snapdragons are a really good example too. The very first big leaves are cotyledons. And these little baby leaves in the middle, those are the first set of true leaves. Now on these carnations, um... Like, we'll pick this one in particular. So this is a cotyledon. And this is the first set of true leaves. And the second set of true leaves is this little bit of growth right in the middle here. Okay, now that we've cleared up what a first set of true leaves is, now I can talk about potting up. So when we pot up, You'll hear a lot of people say you want to wait until they have one or two sets of true leaves. And that's why I thought it was important to tell you guys what true leaves versus cotyledons were. So now that we have some established growth on these flowers, and there's obviously more than one plant in most of these cells, I'm going to go ahead and move them up into bigger pots. I'm going to use my standard little three inch pots here. I just had an extra tray from when we did peppers and I'm just going to pot these up and then we're going to sow new plants in the 72 cell tray. So we just have a continuous cycle of sowing and potting up and getting ready to, you know, plant the garden soon. For today, I think I'm going to be doing the straw flowers, carnations, and the snapdragons. I'm gonna let the celosia go just a little bit longer. Okay, so we'll do the, yeah, we'll do these three right here. Situate the workbench. I've got my plugs here and the trays are gonna be in are right down here. Now the tool that has come in most handy that I have found is just your basic standard butter knife. So working with these plugs, first of all, there's a bunch of different types of trays. This one is a bootstrap farmer tray. So these plugs are really hard and it's not like you can just like push them and pop them out. Now, if these plants had been in like a little kind of cheaper six pack cell tray, you're able to squeeze these or pop them out because they're, they're pretty flimsy. Um, but even if you wanted to protect this pot so you could keep using it over and over again, instead of squeezing and like breaking this plastic, I like to take a butter knife and then just loosen up the sides 
and then you can just pop it out without putting a lot of damage onto your onto your uh, cells or plugs. I just like trying to save stuff that I bought so I don't have to buy it again and it's just I feel like it's responsible to take care of your stuff. So I mean yes this is cheap plastic but I'm gonna this is my second year using these cheapy little pots and you know I still have them they're not in the trash. So let's go ahead and pop these little plants out. To prep this tray real quick all I'm gonna do is just move this soil aside so that way I can just pop these plugs right in. And this is just real easy. I'm just scooting this away. And yes, these pots are pre-moistened with water. I'm gonna be very careful. And like I said, I'm gonna go around the sides and loosen up these plugs. Uh, they do have very tender little roots. So you just wanna be mindful of that. Um, I don't think I'm going to be teasing these apart. I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, however many there is, that's what's going to be in the new pot. So we'll go ahead and just start with some snaps here. And this soil is damp too. When your soil is damp, it helps keep the little plugs together. Here's our first little plug and I'm just going to pop it right in this hole that I already made. I'm going to gently pack it in and there's our first pot of potted snapdragons. I'm just going to keep this show going and just very gently Popping these out. And when I go down, go down all the way and then use the side of the plug as leverage. Just very gently pull it up. That's a nice one. That's a nice plug right there. And you can sort of see the little roots in here. Oops. That is a perfect little plug right there. This is a very nice little plug. It's very triangular shaped, pyramid shaped. There's three plants in here. And if you look very closely, you can just barely see some nice little white root hairs in there. So that is a beautiful, beautiful little plug. And that's why I like using the butter knife because it's a nice flat surface to just pop them nicely out. Now when you go to pop these in your new tray, you wanna make sure that they're gonna fit in nicely. So get the hole just about right for the plug size. And then just very gently Go ahead and put your plug in and just gently but firmly press it in. You don't want to smash it, but make sure it's nice and pressed in there. And there you go. Okay, I've got all of the flowers transplanted into the three inch pots. And now what we're going to do is just give them a little bit of water to sort of water them in and let those roots settle into the new soil. Now, I'm just gonna be very gentle with this watering. Uh, when you do pot up, you typically see some type of transplant shock and your plants might just wilt a little bit and look a little sad, but once those roots start to establish, then they're gonna pop right back up. Um, if you do lose some, 
it's I mean it might be just the name of the game but typically you'll see a little bit of wilting and then they'll pop right up like the next day or two so yep we'll, we're just gonna put some water on these little babies and again I'm just gonna use my pump sprayer and we did have uh, some empty pots here that nothing's ready to transplant in yet so here comes the water I'm just gonna give them a few seconds each this soil is already damp so we're just gonna make sure they settle in Now I'm just going to refill up these empty plug trays with more potting soil. Now I've got my labels. The variety is Utah Tall Celery. And this is a Dwarf Mix Dahlia. Have any of you guys ever grown celery? I have not. I don't even know what their seeds look like. Oh, goodness. Oh, yes I do, because we use celery seed cooking all the time. Oh, they are tiny. Alright, this is what celery seed looks like. I'm gonna read the back of this packet one more time just to make sure that I'm, I'm getting everything right here. Okay, all right. I'm just gonna go ahead and sprinkle this on the top of, I guess, all these plugs. So I've got my seeds and I'm just gonna do a nice light sprinkle So I have no idea how well the germination is supposed to be on these. I mean, this is probably way too much. I always feel like I'll do just a couple seeds per cell, and then it turns out, you know, you did like 50. And then just, I'm not even going to worry about burying anything. I'm just going to press these down. That's typically what you do when seeds are very, very small, like even with basil seeds. You just press them into the soil and that's usually enough. One thing I love to do with celery is juice it. I love celery juice. I think it's so tasty. Like if you've never juiced vegetables before and you try it, there's like, you have to acquire a taste for just vegetable juice in general, but I freaking love celery juice. It's good. I, I really enjoy it. Oh, I did not put enough soil in that one. Oh, well. Okay, celery is done. As always, we're going to sprinkle them in. Next on the list are our dahlias. I'm just going to bring this up here. Now the cool thing about dahlias is even though they're an annual plant, they do develop tubers underground and depending on, you know, how cold it gets in your area, your hardiness zone, those tubers can probably either stay in the ground or if you're like me, uh, you will have to dig tubers up and save them. And it was cool. So last year I planted dahlias from seed. And it was a giant mix, um, so I'm not sure this is the exact variety it was. But I dug up those tubers and saved them in my last video. I showed you guys that, and it would be cool to just have to deal with uh, tubers from now on instead of having to plant seeds time and time again. But, you know, I'm, I'm learning still. So I'm going to go ahead and just plant two seeds per pot, and then once they sprout, I will thin them down to just one. 
Now, just like with everything else, when I sow seeds, I like to just put them on the surface and then press them all in at the same time. It's just a good visual for me to know that, okay, I did put a seed on this pot. I'm just gonna press them in gently. They are sort of flat and long, so you don't want to like press it in and snap the seeds. So, you know, it might even be like pressed to the side and then push the seeds in. Or if you are smarter than me, you make your divots first and then put the seeds inside the little pockets that you made. I'm just gonna be nice and gentle. And you don't have to go too deep with these. You know, probably just like a centimeter or eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch-ish. And then we're just going to go back through and tuck them in. Let me know, do you guys have a favorite variety of dahlia? Where do you get your dahlias? Do you plant tubers or do you start from seed? All right guys, the greenhouse is looking pretty full and spiffy right about now. I'll just show you what we've got in here real quick. Here we have tomatoes that I planted up this morning that you guys will have seen a video for. Over here we are rocking our hot peppers, our sweet peppers. Here's the, our potted up flowers that we just did. Here is our freaking forest of onions that are getting ready to be hardened off soon in planting in the garden. And then we've got our little celosias that are almost ready to be potted up along with our little baby lavenders. And then a freshly seeded slot of dahlias as well as some celery. I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video to the end and learning how to pot up plugs to bigger plant pots with me today. I appreciate you guys and I will see you on the next video. Bye!